Our camper is about to go to the shop. And we're about to be homeless. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And times are actually a little too exciting right now, wouldn't you say? We've had a lot of excitement. Yes, we have. Um, as you probably know, we're full-time RVers, and you probably saw our last video. If you haven't, uh, I'll put it down here, where we actually crunched our camper, and that is... Yeah, we as in me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, that has changed everything as full-time RVers. If you are a full-time RVer, it's likely that somewhere along the way, you're gonna lose the use of your rig. It's gonna have to go in the shop for some kind of work. This actually was one of my biggest fears going on the road full-time, is that I've got no house to fall back to. So what happens if the rig has to go in for extensive repairs? And- <laughs> We're finding out. We're learning. We're yeah. learning what happens. <laughs> The good news is we have learned that it's not totaled, right? Right. Right after it happened, you know, I started making phone calls to local shops and I found out that it was going to be six weeks before they could even look at it. I mean, they didn't even want me to bring it into the shop until six weeks out. And that's normal for the RV industry. So if you have a camper and something happens to it, especially in season, expect to lose it for the rest of the season. I mean, it's not uncommon to have a camper in the shop for three months or even six months. Right, right. And we did some serious damage to ours, so we know we could lose it for a while. Yeah, I bent and busted the frame in the back, not the chassis, but the body frame. So the accident happened in California, but here we are in Washington, actually looking at Idaho. I can see Idaho from the window. So how did we get here? You did some research online and you found a, uh, an RV shop that, that had great reviews online. Well, and that was my thinking because we were in California when this happened. Season had already started there and I thought, well, why don't we look further north where season hasn't started? And this is an advantage of being a full-time RVer. We are not tied to any local dealer. We can go anywhere. There are good dealers and bad dealers in the automotive industry, and that holds true in the RV industry. Even more so. I think so. The RV yeah. industry, I think, is really has a really bad reputation as yeah. a whole. Okay, so the first research was looking to find a dealership that maybe the camping season hadn't happened, so maybe they weren't swamped yet. And then the next thing we did was we looked at reviews, and we, we read every review. We didn't expect all five stars, but this one had a 4.8, and we read every single review, both sales and service. Of course, we were mostly concerned with service. The dealership is Blue Dog RV. And we called them, and uh, I was talking to the fellow there, and I said, you know, how long before I can get it into the shop? And he said, well, we can take it now. So this dealership is unusual in that they told us that as full-time RVers, we are given priority. I mean, we were just shocked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never heard that before. Knowing that we were going to be up here and we would need some place to live, we started looking at extended stay hotels um, and Airbnb. And we thought we wanted an Airbnb because we could get a full-size fridge because we had all the food. Yeah. And we also wanted a washer and dryer. Yeah. <laughs> we're kind of tired of going to the laundromat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were. We ended up booking an Airbnb. And, and after I got over the initial shock of how much it was going to oh cost. Oh my goodness, well over budget, probably double our budget. Double, double what I expected to pay, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, and, and that was the cheapest we could find yep. that, that didn't look scary. Yep, yep. It was in a in a nice neighborhood. So a few days before we're gonna check in, we get a note or an email from the host saying, there's a problem. The people who are in it before you have come down with COVID and they are locked in place. They aren't gonna be leaving anytime soon. They're in quarantine and they can't break quarantine and it could be a couple weeks or more until we could get that place. Yeah, so now we're truly homeless. That and was so stressful. Yeah, I was just, that was the worst possible news. And yeah, here we are driving. And so then we looked and said, well, let's see if we can find another Airbnb. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there was nothing available except for something triple the price. And we'd already doubled our budget. There was no way we were getting the triple the price one. Right. That was such a stressful day. It was. I mean, you know, we're, 
we're coming up to get our rig worked on. We're driving 1,100 miles to do it, and now we've got no place to stay while it's in the shop. There really is no place. We started checking through VRBO. We looked on Craigslist. Um, we, we just checked everywhere that we could possibly think of, and nothing. Well, the lesson that we learned is that when you look for a dealership, and if you're like us and you're gonna travel for, to a dealership, it's also good to do research on housing. We had absolutely no idea that the housing in this area is super, super high. Right. And I think if we had done that research first, maybe we would have kept on looking for dealerships. We could have I looked in the so. South Dakota area. We yeah. could have looked in the Vegas area. Well, we could have looked around and and we didn't. So that, that was a mistake on our part, but there actually was a gift in this. So we continue on and we get into town. We, we do have a, a campground that, that I reserved for a couple of nights. We hook up and take the rig in to see the dealer and, and he checks it all out. And he says, well, we got to order parts. And in the meantime, you guys can just stay in your rig. I could have hugged him. Yeah. <laughs> that is so unusual. That was in a the, huge relief. It's yeah. so unusual in the RV industry to have them do that. Every dealership that I've heard of, and I've been camping since the 90s, is you have to leave your rig there. They want your camper. They want it in the lot and let it sit for weeks or even months for parts. Right. You can't use it. We also realized it would be impossible to predict our exact start date and end date. So instead of running an apartment or an Airbnb, we needed a place with flexible dates. Right. He said, go on to the campground. It'll be a few weeks. We'll call you when, they're, when we're ready to bring it in. And I said, well... You know, we're only nine miles away. It'll take us, you know, a couple of hours at, at best to pack it up and, and get over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not looking forward to to unpacking and getting taking everything we need. And we will, of we course, should, forget stuff. In the, we it, should do a video about that because there's certain preparations that we're going to follow. And that'll be, I think, a good upcoming video. One of the neat things about this part of Washington and Idaho, there's a bike trail called the Centennial Bike Trail. And it goes for 77 miles, I think, all the way yeah. across northern Idaho. Yep. Yeah. So we biked by a hotel and Paul went in with his bike helmet on. I just went in and asked uh, to speak with the manager. And he said, well, yeah, I can give you a, a, a reduced rate for the for a longer stay. And it's a nice place. It's right on right on the Spokane River. So it's a beautiful area. So we may be there three weeks, six weeks, or even longer, but at least we'll have biking and we'll have a little fridge and we'll be able to get through it. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely gonna require some adjustments on our part because, you know, this is home, you know, and so we won't be in our home. Right, so I do think we should just keep updating everybody on this process because it's new to us and we're learning on the way and we're happy to share what we learned with you. These are first world problems, you know, we're, we, uh, we're gonna be fine, but, but it's just gonna be a major inconvenience for a few weeks. Well, let us know if you've been a full-time RVer for a while and you've had your camper go in the shop, let us know some of the tips and things that you've learned in that process. I finally found an affordable place for us to sleep.